Cuisinaire, Mike. So well, there's been some contentious things going on. Uh, one of which was about uh, how do colourblind children, people, cope with Cuisinaire rods, uh, and and it is a real uh, a real issue, certainly. Uh, one strategy which uh, we've we've started to, to deploy is to have a set of the ten rods with the colours written on so that although they still can't, may not be able to differentiate the colours from one another so easily, they have got the words and the, the, the names of the colours printed on the rods. Uh, yeah, let's start off with, with the youngest children in Queensland. Okay. I've never found a problem with the colours because they are all related by size. Um, then that's what we focus on really. We might call them the orange one. That's your orange one. Yeah. We might call them the orange one or the brown one or the pink one, but on the whole, I haven't found the naming of the colours an issue. And with older students where it has been, I'm using the word students because sometimes applies with teachers, these are handy to help remind them what to call them. But with younger children, it is a matter of having a tray and letting them make pictures and patterns with them, yeah. which they will do ad infinitum. A lot of them are symmetrical, and a lot of them employ the structures of the rod. So this is the sort of kit, this is um, the absolutely iconic structure for a set of um, all ten rods. And gradually, when they when they can when they've made that, that starts getting integrated into what they're else they're making. So that'll be built into some sort of sail for a boat or a house roof or. Um, and you can begin to see these iconic patterns sort of coming through. Um, so it is a matter of making something, uh, talking about describing it, making something similar or different to somebody else, um, and getting to grips with all the relationships between the rods. Yes, and, and in terms of relationships, because we, we can label these as W, R for red, G for green, and so on down to capital B for blue and uh, O for orange. Uh, we, we, we can uh, have young children writing equations. So if we take the pink as the answer, what, uh, what can we make that's the same length? I was gonna do yellow. All right, go for yellow then, that's fine. <laughs> what can we, uh, how many equations can we make where the answer's yellow? Or in simpler sort of words, how many trains can you make with a train being with a train being two uh, a number of rods lined up an equal end length. to end? Yeah. So how many trains can you make of equal length to the yellow? How many different trains can you make? So, or as a child said to me once, I'm going to make a yellow sandwich with all the different fillings in it. And how many different fillings can you make? What counts as different? And how does that alter according to which of the rods you use. And uh, I did some work with some younger children uh, which involved them. Sorry, do you want to do something? No, I just want to do that. Yep, I just want to do that in terms of this being R plus R plus W equals uh, Y for yellow. And here was another equation, R plus W plus R equals yellow equals Y. Uh, and getting them to not worry about the lengths of them, but looking at them in terms of the, the, the proportional lengths and writing, equa writing symbols to de describe what they've, what they've done. Uh, and with very young children, um, I'm referring to uh, reception age children. Uh, some of the children who had an equation such as this, R plus R plus W equals Y, uh, I, I mentioned that they could write this as 2R. R plus R is the same as 2Rs. Uh, and they seemed quite happy with that. That didn't seem to be problematic no. at all. I think it's timing or something like that, isn't it? it you is, don't do that straight away. Absolutely. You it feed was, that in. It was because they'd already done mm. something in the first instance that I could then respond to. Uh, so this, already you, I, I can see that there's quite a lot of sandwich fillings that you can make um, with 
that are different to each other. So that's a really lovely kind yeah. of task. They yeah. can stretch right the way up. Yes. Uh, and I did want to say something about the values because I think people commonly get moved quite quickly to calling this the one, the two, the three, yeah. the four, the five, and that we've got to get on. How do they know what number that is? Well, it doesn't. It isn't one one number. And I actually would not use any number values specific attached to these rods until about year three. I think from reception year one, year two, you just work on the relationships between them That's right. and working on the on the equations and then when you get as far as year three you can say okay if I'm calling this one tell me what the values of the other rods are oh, or I call if I'm this calling one? this one what are the value of the What's other the rods? What's the fractional value of that one? And that, and that so on. in year three then opens up a whole new Cuisinaire world yeah. doesn't it Mike? It does, yeah.